When Keister was living fully, she was usually in a pool. Swimming, her true joy, if she could have a swim-up food bar, that would be perfect. Life couldn't get any better. In the pool, she didn't have to rely on a leg hobbled by a tumor. We had three criteria, difficulty breathing, difficulty walking, and pain. She had no pain, but she was having difficulty walking. So we talked, and it was time. Keister recently lost her battle with cancer, but the ripples remain from the splash she made while she was here. Don't cry because it's over, smile because it happened. And that I do. In her own humble way, Keister added to a growing and important pool of knowledge. She's a teacher. The teacher, I, I always maintain that my dogs are teachers in life and teachers in death. She will continue to teach for many years. Keister was the second dog to undergo a special high dose radiation therapy at Colorado State's Flint Animal Cancer Center. When faced with not much of an option for surgery, I asked Steve Withrow, what have you got that's new and different? The first to receive the therapy was Bo, an agility trials champion who competed to the end. I wanted to make sure that I had no regrets, no stones unturned, and that I did everything I could for him with the best information possible. The one thing that, that Steve and everybody else does is they never take away your hope. Keister and Bo were on separate journeys, but traveled similar paths. We went with that therapy because of Bo, and the next dog will benefit more from Keister. She's a part of the puzzle, and I feel very privileged to be a part of that. Cancer survivors Emily Brown and Daisy join Bo and Keister on this interconnected expedition as Paw and Hand come together in search for one cure. Fabulous. Thank oh. you, too. So Emily nice. Brown and Leah Gore believe in the power of one cure. Dr. Gore has been Emily's medical oncologist since she was first diagnosed with cancer. We were together, quite frankly, 24-7 for that 10 solid months of treatment. I don't think there was a day that I wasn't very close to being gone, I mean to death. And you do create those bonds very easily during that time period. At one point, Leah ran out of answers, which meant Emily was out of options. I was given three months to live, and you know, it was pretty explicit what was going to happen in those three months. I realized what it is that got us here, and, yes. and that's such an extraordinary privilege. Dr. Gore contacted the Flint Animal Cancer Center to see if there were any promising clinical trials in dogs that could benefit Emily. It's a rare opportunity when you have the chance to drive up the road or make a quick local phone call to somebody that has really contributed very significantly to the benefit of patients that you're taking care of. I was able to get in a study for an experimental drug that CSU had helped develop and the only thing that could have saved my life in that time period was experimental treatment. There was no other drug in my system at that point. We're not doing this because it's just interesting. I would never offer a patient a trial that I didn't think was worth it. It has to offer them the potential that we're really gonna learn something that makes their life worthwhile and makes their commitment to this research worthwhile and makes their investment in us worthwhile. Collaboration saved Emily's life. At the Flint Animal Cancer Center, the team feels a special gratitude for being part of Emily's success story. The positive outcome motivates them to do more. The message of this year's One Cure is Together We Can really shows a cycle that we hope to be able to reproduce over and over again. There is this phenomenal synergy that we learn from the dogs, the dogs learn from us, and the ability to not only change an individual experience for that patient who's sitting in clinic that day or sitting in the hospital, but really to look very broadly and say, look, we're gonna change how we think about doing cancer research because of this. That's the part that's really exciting to me. And then another three weeks after that. A beloved great dame named Daisy has a similar relationship with her caring medical team, led by her oncologist, Dr. Bernard Segay. Oh, it's really great to see her 
Yeah. And it's such been. great spirits. Craig and Emily report how this is the good old Daisy. This is Daisy as she was before they knew she had cancer. I think we've achieved the quality of life. Now we want to extend that as long as we can. We can't have our own children, and so she's she's it. She was our gift, and so uh, we're just lucky and blessed to still have her. Daisy is battling osteosarcoma, the most common bone tumor in dogs and the most malignant bone tumor in children. As hard as the last nine months have been, helping Daisy through this, like it's, it's just hard to fathom what a human parent would have to go through if it was their child. Our primary motivation was to save our, our puppy, to save our little girl, and it's pretty cool that this can be helpful and might cross over and help people even more so because it's almost always children. That dog had been on the drug for 16 months. Dr. Segay heads a clinical trial into finding personalized treatment options for individual osteosarcoma tumors. I can't make the claim that this is how Daisy is going to respond, but at the same time, we've had some very encouraging results, and so. After her limb spare and eventual amputation, Daisy had run out of treatment options. And in some ways, as sad as it is, this disease is so horrendous that unfortunately, without any further therapy, we know what the outcome is going to be, but hopefully we can push it back. Bye, Daisy. Bye, Daisy. <laughs> the clinical trial offered by Dr. Segay may be your only hope. If Daisy qualifies and they accept, they will enter the trial for Daisy's well-being and for the children who will benefit from her experience. Wow, she's taught us how to be good human beings. It's both mind-boggling and heartwarming, knowing that somebody that you don't know is already looking out for you. And they're not only looking out for you, they're looking out for your kids, their kids, your pets. They are an all-encompassing group that's truly trying to make the world a better place. Be well. Bye. Mm, love you. Love you. Be good. People will say about their children or their dogs, it, it may or may not help us. We may not benefit it from, but I sure hope that we can prevent somebody else from having to go through this in the future. And, and over and over again, we hear that from families that are willing to participate in research studies. If we work hard at it, then we keep at it. Eventually, we'll, we will find better treatments and, and hopefully one day find the cure. I saw a great potential in collaborations. Through one cure, we learn from one another and create new solutions by tackling the problems together. I can find kindred spirits at the Animal Cancer Center to really create these multidisciplinary teams that together have the knowledge and the expertise and the vision to move the field forward. Clinical trials are the only way we have to make innovations. If we stayed the same, uh, I think we'd lose the hope. We had a, a great ride together um, and a lot of extra fun because of what they did for us at CSU, but I, I don't have the words as to how I would thank them. They truly are trying to save an animal's life, and unfortunately for us, saving their lives is going to save my life. And when we find that one cure, that's going to benefit children, it's going to benefit adults, it's going to benefit everybody. Those involved in One Cure create ripples that change the depth of our experience and give us all reason to hope. It's just the little things in life for both the animals and the people. It's hope.